All right, hello, Metal Maniacs. It's the Meister from Brews and Tunes. Cheers. Uh, I am absolutely thrilled. I'm beside myself with excitement today. I am chatting with a a legend in the metal world, uh, the indelible, uh, the one and only, uh, Miss Leather Leone. How are you doing? That's a great word, indelible. I love that. I'm doing really well. <laughs> Thank you for having me. I think have a thing for words. That's a good word. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh yeah, and then you are. You yeah. I mean, I think that truly fits you. Um, well, I, I, leather. I I'm I've been I've been wanting to interview you for years. So uh, this is this is a dream come true. I'm really excited. And right. uh, and I think you know and, and I think the timing is great too because I know you just got back from Brazil doing a tour there. Um, yeah. So I yeah. definitely want to talk about that. And and I okay. have, so I, even though I'm late, a, a little late here, uh, I know it's been a couple of years, but I have to congratulate you for this phenomenal album. Um, Thank you. Thank uh, you. Yeah, just, um, you know, we are the That's chosen. A good, it's a good record. Vinny it's and a, I did a good job on that record. Fantastic yeah. Fantastic record. Yeah. So Thank we'll you definitely so much. talk about that too. Okay. I'm this, yeah, this is end all be all. It, it's such a <laughs> great record. I mean, it definitely you know it's definitely one of my top 20 you know for 2020 great sure maybe well, nice. I, I, more than 20 top 10 for sure i mean i'll take top 20 such I'll a great that. album such a great <laughs> thank album. you um but yeah so yeah so um sorry i just i just kind of threw a bunch of stuff no out. That, that's cool that's cool that's cool <laughs> uh but yeah tell me about the the brazil tour because i know you just got back just a couple weeks ago right you know, this started out as um, there's a, a really big thrash band down there called Torture Squad. I don't know if you know who they are. They're huge. Oh, yeah. So I started talking to, to May, the singer, just, I don't know, a couple of years ago, just back and forth. And she was, oh, oh leather. And anyway, um, I tried to get into Summer Breeze this year, but I was too late. So anyway, we started talking about it. And she said, you know what? Um, when I wrote this song... I was kind of thinking about your vocal style. Is there any way that you would consider doing this with me, a summer breeze? And I'm like, dude, I'm, dude, I'm there. So it kind of started from there. And then Vinny, a text, my guitar player, started talking to people. So I just did some clubs. Um, yeah, I did a couple of great festivals. I was down there for five weeks. So it just kind of blew up into this thing. Nice. Brazil really holds me dear in their heart. I love them so much. And I haven't been there since 19. So, you know, they were pretty oh, hungry. Wow. to see. It was great. It was great. Nice, nice, very cool. And so you, so you did the the summer breeze, and then and then you you mentioned various clubs like throughout the country. Yes, kind of I, I actually did area? something in in Recife, Brazil. It was called the April Rock Fest, and it was just insane. Nice. Two to three, just crazy people. And then you know clubs that I've played before. Um, and then I ended with Summer Breeze, which I only did a couple songs with her, but they had to pull me off the stage. I'm just like, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> Yeah, it was really great because I haven't toured in a long time. You know, everything fell apart for me musically pre-COVID. So I'm trying to crawl my way back, you know. Nice. Well, I I, I think you're doing more than crawling. You're you're you're, <laughs> you're you. making a stand <laughs> for sure. Um, yeah, and especially with with this masterpiece, I think you really made a stand with that album. Um, yeah, tell me about that. Tell me about well, one, I guess it goes back a little further, it goes back to Leather Two, which came yes. out in 2019, 2018. So 18, bad. I think. And that was um that was an opportunity that I had. It was a touring band that I was using at the time. And it it was done really fast. And there were too many cooks in the kitchen, you know. And I was just so happy to be able to make music. It was done very fast. Um, Vinny and I have been talking about how we can't listen to it any longer. Oh, no. Um, but it was good. It put me back out there, I think, and it catapulted me into doing other things. And like I said, um, I, I, I was on a roll 18 and 19 again playing shows. I had a big American tour planned with a Grim Reaper, our dear friend Steve Grimmett. Um, um, and pre-COVID, and pre it just all fell apart. And my life was in, I say, metal chaos. Everybody just disbanded. And I didn't really know what I was going to do. But Vinny, uh, text my guitar player, um, we had just became really good friends when we met. And he's an avid songwriter. He just wants to write songs. And the Brazilians are really into the 80s. They think, ah, oh, everything 80s is glorious, which is so funny to me. Um, but anyway, so I said, hey, let's look and see if we can write. Because, you know, I come from Chastain. Basically, he wrote. He'd throw me a bone now and then. But I'm like, I'll try. And we just started writing. And it, I think We Take Back Control was the first song that we did. And it just really, really worked with him. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, but we had two, well, we had two years, a year and a half to write it, right? There was nothing to do. And then I shopped it and I picked up SPD and it just kind of catapulted from there. 
Nice, nice. Yeah. So how did how did you how did you meet Vinny? How did I mean because I think you guys really fit well together. I mean, you you are a great writing team. Um I met him in uh, 2016. I was doing the Rob Rock tour in Brazil, which was amazing from Impelitary, Rob Rock. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was, uh, Vinny was playing for Rob Rock at that time, not me. Oh. And, you know, I used to, I always like to play, uh, watch bigger bands. I like to see what they do and kind of study them. And Vinny, again, I just used to watch Vinny and I just, I loved his style. I loved his aura. He's just a rock dude. I just like young rock dudes. Yeah. And I have a hard time finding them in the States, I gotta tell you. They uh, they have no machismo. They aren't jaded down there. They just want to write songs and play. They don't care about what label they're on or what clothes they wear. Or they're, they're just really pure metal. And we just started talking. And um, I said to the promoter at the time, I think I want him in my band. I think he's my band. And then it just, like I said, it catapulted from there. And then he was with me for Leather 2. Um, and we were just kind of unhappy about Leather 2 together. So, uh, and it was kind of weird at first because he speaks Portuguese, I speak English, but we, we do really well together. Nice. Yeah, I think, I, I think, you know, especially this, this, you know, this newest yeah. is, I mean, you guys nailed it out of the park with this. Well, you know, he's the first wow. guitar player that I've worked with it. He just wanted to write for me. His ideas, his idea of melody was really, di really different than mine. Oh my God, we argued through this whole record. But he just wanted to showcase my voice and I've never really had anybody do that. He was like, I'm a fan. This is what you sound best doing. So, cause you know, I, I want to do like Cookie Monster all the time. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, no, no. But anyway, I'm really uh, proud to work with him. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah, he's great. Yeah, I've, and 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 yeah, it should be noted. I mean, he plays all the guitars on the album and the bass. And the bass. Yeah, and I, I even got to do some backgrounds because my background history is it's just my voice. I needed a different texture. Mm. And you can hear his accent in a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's just yeah, it, it, it's such a great album. It's so rich. Thank you so much. And yeah, I just and, you know from like the first like as soon as my, the needle drops, it's like boom. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so we wrote back. we wrote we take back control, and I'm like this is because I was angry, man. I had a lot to say. I was like, <laughs> and that, yeah. that set the whole tone for the record yeah 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 it's great it's yeah thank you so do much you, yeah do you have um so you know you, you got back from brazil recently do, do you have uh other tour plans at this point i do i can't really talk about them okay. um but i do um at the end of this year and spring of next year a lot of really great things are happening but i can't talk about them um i was uh slated to do the paul diano tour um, oh, wow. now in July, but unfortunately his health is failing. So they had to postpone yeah. it. I was really looking forward to that, but yeah, I have things in the works. You know, I just want to be on the road, you know, you know, that was obviously my thing with Chastain, but he never even liked to tour when we did. So I just want to be on the road and I'm finally getting some opportunities. So I'm going to grab them for sure. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. I know David Chastain was not a big tour fan. Like, yeah, but it, which is too bad. You know, there there could have been some pretty amazing tours back then. But you know what? I got to tell you, sticking up for him, I understand him now. Because Vinny and I basically do, basically do everything. It's not like we have management. We don't have all these people. It is such hard work. I said to you, now I get it. You booked the clubs. You routed the routes. You collected the money. You did the whole... And by the end, he goes, I, I never wanted to go on stage and play. I was freaking exhausted. You know, he had to do everything. We never had really a booking agent. or So I understand what he's saying. Now it's hard work. Hard yeah. Work. yeah that's a lot of work and especially you know back then i mean because you, you don't have the internet so it's you know yeah. calls and letters and you know, just at the end the of ass. every show at the end of every show he would go backstage and he, he looked like a drug dealer he would have the great silver briefcase and he'd walk <laughs> and he'd be walking <laughs> to collect the money it was so great nice <laughs> but yeah i i'm i we bug him all the time Vinny and i bug him all the time about but he's done he made a comment once. He said, if I control like Iron Maiden where we all have our, we have a, a private jet in our own buses, then I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That like, dude, that, that's yeah. Maiden. That's what I'm... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think anybody would, you know, if, yeah, if they have their own all private. Yeah, do it that way, right? You yeah. know your stuff. You're all private. You go on stage. That's it. You're done. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, so, you know, you mentioned that, you know, that, that Vinny text is, you know, writes a lot and, you know, loves to write music. So yeah. that being said, is there anything in the works right now for a, for a follow-up album? Yeah. He's actually been calling me all day, but I haven't called him back. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know why I'm being so weird about that. I, I don't know. 
But yes, I, SPD wants another one. And we were obviously we're saying to each other, can we can we do this again? Can we write another Griffin <laughs> Chosen? I, I get too heavy about it in my head, you know? Um, but yeah, I mean, I have to. Oh my God, I'm on a roll. I have to, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you have to take opportunities. I talked to so many young people and I understand. I was so disgruntled in my 30s. Nothing was going on. It's just, you never know, man. Keep going. You have no idea what's going to happen to you or who's going to call you. So yeah, we're talking about another record. Cool. Yeah. He's a, he's a Leo. He's always the plans, plans, plans. He would just look at me in the middle of rehearsal and go, I have an idea for the cover. I mean, he just, <laughs> you know, he's a really thoughtful, organized Leo. And I'm the opposite. So I struggle. <laughs> But it, it's it's a good combination, I think. It makes it really is yin, yin and yang for sure. Yeah, yeah. So as as far as the songwriting goes, and that, so is is it is it Vinny coming up with riffs and then you coming up with lyrics, or are you coming up with lyrics? Yeah, he, he kind of like I said, he kind of writes all the time, and so do I. But I write without really a melody in mind, and he writes all the time. So he'll send me pieces of music, and then we kind of take it from there. Did you like it? Do you like it? And then we kind of then we kind of start. I'm a I'm a lyricist, but I need to hear music. I need to hear a guitar or a piano to really help it go. Okay. But he starts by sending me pieces of music. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Cool. Very cool. Nice. Um. <clears throat> so if if you don't mind, I wouldn't. Uh, do you mind taking a taking a little trip in the the way back machine and going back? See into what I remember. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool. So, uh, so I know you grew up in in like out, just outside of Rochester, New York, correct? I did. Yeah, Evan, New York. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then you moved to San Francisco in the like what late seventies, early eighties. I went to college, and I say there really loosely. Okay. I went to college outside of New York City, and I knew that I wanted to sing, but I didn't know what to do. I didn't know okay. what to do. Um, I started singing in cover bands there just because some guy came up to me and said, "Hey, can you sing Barracuda?" Um, and then I was really bored. God, I was 19. I wasn't doing anything. I was just getting high all the time. And I had reached out to a woman that I had trained horses with. And she was in Berkeley. She goes, oh, my God, come see me. Come see me. And back then, you could fly to San Francisco for 75 bucks, you know? Yeah. Um, anyway, I, I moved up there to Berkeley. And um, I don't know how old you are, but back in the day, they would post um, posters on telephone poles. Oh, yeah. Looking for singers or drummer. And someone one day, um, someone said they were looking for like a nail spitter or something. Some sing anyway. I, ho I hooked up with these girls. I was rude girl, and then I just never left. Um, right. We just we had all these good contacts. That's how I met Mike Barney from Shrapnel. It was eighty two. Um, that's when I met Dio personally and musically, and I started working with all the Black Sabbath people. It was just this rush of stuff. Wow. Um, but of course, that didn't work out. And it's interesting. I have a thing about time. You and I said one like the other day, right? One o five. I'm out. You said two o'clock today, so you and I were both there at one fifty. That's what we do. That's what yeah. you do. But California is not like that. So we had a lawyer. We were going to sign this deal with CBS, and I, I was there with my pen. I waited for that band for forty-five motherfucking minutes, and they never showed up. I walked oh, out. Wow. I walked out. I went home, and I called Mike Verney. That's that's how that all happened. Wow. Holy. Yeah. Man. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, crazy. Crazy. Yeah, they were all tripping on the beach or whatever. I, I can't do that. And that's what LA, a, if you have an appointment in LA at four o'clock, it's like 4 15, 4 20. I ain't got time for that. Yeah. 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 yeah but it worked out, right? Yeah. <laughs> it yeah. It totally anymore. worked out. Yeah. Cause, yeah. Cause so, so you knew Mike Varney already. And, and he yeah, he, was... he became a quick friend of mine. Okay. Yeah. I talked to him probably every night. Every night I used to talk to him. Okay. And he was working with, David Chastain and that was when he was doing all the shredding guitar players remember the Paul uh, Gilberts and the Marty well David Chastain was in that lump yeah but he wanted to do a, a lyric he wanted to do songs he wanted to do a vocal record so I'm trying to say why he hooked up with a, a woman at that point I don't know I think maybe because of the keys that he was writing in I'm not sure why a guitar player like him in 1982 or 83 would go yeah yeah let's work with a fan no idea Hmm. But he sent me um, Black Knight, Mystery of Illusion, and Winds of Change. I went into somebody's bedroom with a four track and I recorded it, and that was it. I was probably in Ohio in three months doing Mystery of Illusion. Wow. That's yeah. And had, did, you, did you know David Chastain at this point? Did you have yeah. you, and No. So. You know what's so funny? People always say, What was the first meeting like or the first conversation? And I'm like, I don't remember, but I drink a lot, you know? So, <laughs> so I reached out to Chastain and we just don't, we don't remember. We, I just remember being in his house and rehearsing. 
but we must have talked. But no, I knew nothing about him. I just heard those songs. And that was really different. Um, his style of writing was really different from the Dio's and the Maidens. And the, so I thought, hell, why not? Yeah, it was so different to my ears. I wanted to try it. I wanted to try yeah, to do it. Cool. Did you have a, you know, when you started recording that album and, you know, hearing the songs and started recording, did you have a sense of how impactful that album would become? Never in a million years. Okay. Never in a million years. I remember we were up actually just up the street here at Prairie Sun Studios. I think it's still there. It's like a farm and you know you stay there. No, I, I, I was really green. I didn't know what the hell I was doing. I was so nervous. And you listen to the record. Basically, I'm just shouting through the whole record. But that's when I met Cliff from uh, Metallica. He was up there with Trauma. That's when we had Fred Corey. We were just all young and green. And I would just go in the studio every day and oh, the art. <laughs> I'm not an easy person to work with, period. So let alone when I was that inexperienced and nervous. Oh, I was a tyrant. I was brutal. Because oh, right. I had learned the songs, right? And then I think I walked in for Endlessly or Mr. It, Mr. Evolution. And Chess Andy totally changed the melody. And I was like, fuck you. <laughs> but I was, I was really insecure, you know. But yeah, that record, it amazes me that I talked to teenagers in Europe and South America. And they know the record. It's amazing. Yeah, I mean, I've even Chastain said, "Did we ever know right. that?" Yeah, that little, and it pissed me off. Why was the nude woman on the cover? I mean, what? <laughs> <laughs> well, it was eighty-five. So. It was eighty eighty-five. Yeah, but no, um, I, I, and I, I guess I feel blessed because David was obviously smart enough to dis distribute, get distribution deals throughout the world. So I know a lot of bands that can't go to Brazil because nobody ever got their music. So he obviously did that. He said we never got any money, but it's out there. Those yeah. records are out there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you still, yeah, you see, yeah. Like you said, I see posts on metal pages all the time and it's young people like really, yeah. People, yeah all over yeah. the world posting, it you know, albums and, yeah. 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 20 year old girl singing angel of mercy to me. They weren't even born. I mean, I gotta yeah. tell you, it's, it's a real tear jerker for me sometimes. Um, but I always go to Vinny and go, fuck, don't let him see me cry. Um, <laughs> it's amazing. It's amazing to me because we never broke. We were never a big band, you know, but yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, it, it, yeah, it's sad and frustrating as a fan that, yeah, and maybe it's a good thing in some ways. I don't know. Yeah. It, I always felt like Chastain should have been so much bigger because you guys, it was such an amazing, incredible. Well, but you have to remember, people. David Chastain didn't want to do. Yeah. He turned down major labels all the time. I have conversations with him about big tours that I've heard that he turned down. He just didn't care about it. He just wanted to make records. So, you know, people didn't have an open door to deal with us. So, it, you know, it was hard. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, especially in the 80s, you don't want to do it. Okay, there's somebody right there that will do it, you know, right? right. Yeah, 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 yeah. There were a lot of bands, hungry bands. Oh, God, still, um, still. You don't want to yeah. do Oh, they'll do it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any frustration or regret from that at all? Or do you, do you feel pretty, I feel pretty comfortable? And, no, I mean, oh, my God, I'm only here because of that. So, no, I it, it doesn't... <laughs> I have these conversations with Vinny all the time. I'm sure he'll be watching this. I love you, Vinny. Um, that I obviously, I, it seems like I obviously try to get away from what I've done. Just, I just want to move on. But again, mm -hmm. he's a fan going, you can't move on from this. This is who you are. Yeah. You know, so I have a hard time. But I was hoping that we are the chosen. And I think it really helped me to finally be seen as a solo person as opposed to linked with Chastain. But no, I don't regret it. Oh my God. I thank him every day. It's because of the songs he wrote, you know? Yeah, and he was actually really sweet the other day. He said, "You, you know, it was us. You delivered the stuff," and I was really taken back by that. He goes, "We were a team. It wasn't me." So, but yeah, but he wrote the songs. Yeah, yeah, but it, I mean, yeah, it was definitely. A, I mean, you know, a lot of people know Dave Chastain, know his his you know amazing guitar licks, his his amazing tone. But I mean, really, yeah. that band, at least for me. It was always about the vocal delivery, really. I mean, I love all the music. I love everything about the, about right. Chastain, but for me, it was always about Leo Leone. I mean, it, that was. Just... You know, I have this conversation with people a lot. So, what what draws people in is it the vocals? Is it the melody? Is it the vocal tone? Is it the guitar solo? I always wonder. To me, it's like the rhythm of the song. I love rhythm guitar so much. Mm. Yeah. I don't know. That's really interesting to me. I think it's melody. It's melody, right? Anybody, anybody could have been singing those melodies. I don't know. I have a hard time with it, but yeah, no, I, I do not regret any of it. Oh my God. No, 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 no. Yeah. 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 And I, I don't mean regret <laughs> the, the, the time playing. I, I, do you have any regrets in terms of like 
not doing those big tours and, you know. Or, oh, yeah, <laughs> but I had nothing to do with it. Yeah. I think what I learned from it, which now I should have been more aware of what was going on. That's a problem that I have. I think that you're obviously on the same page as me. Everybody that you do with musically, they want the same thing. No, they don't, especially now. It's in one year, out the other. As soon as you're up, so I should have paid more attention, I think, and had more input. I don't think it would have changed anything, but I should have been more aware of what was going on. Yeah, yeah, interesting. Um, so here's a, here's a question, and, and I know you've you've talked about this before, but I I, I have to ask this. Okay, so you left the industry, um, <laughs> you know, right after, uh, or not right after, but I guess after the after doing tours, doing shows with, um, uh, you know, uh, for those for those who dare. Yes, yes, uh, yes. So at like ninety one, ninety two. You yes. stepped away for 30 years almost um yes what yeah i think what, it was 27 what prompted that what i think david and i just came to like a mutual understanding that um i really thought for those for, for those who dare was really going to take off but again he didn't want to tour he didn't want to leave the country so it wasn't going anywhere um you know we were just playing the same all clubs and the crowds were getting smaller i think i don't know it just wasn't going anywhere uh, and like I said, we didn't have any big conversation about it. We just said goodbye after the tour. And my whole, th I can remember thinking that I wanted to get in a band that was more aggressive because that was like um, Rage Against the Machine and all these people were coming out. So I went home. Um, I was called it the California Living, California Champagne and Cocaine. And I just hung out for six months and then I really started going for it, you know. And the feedback that I got at the time, all, all the guys from these aggressive like thrash bands would go, whatever, you're a chick. Really? And I would be like, fuck you, listen to Seventh and Never, motherfucker. Yeah. But, um, and I had a lot of meetings with labels, but I got to tell you, honestly, nobody was interested in leather as I was. They wanted me to be more sexual, more pop. They always told me I wasn't good looking enough. And I was, I, I never did this to be famous or be a poster girl. I, I didn't right. care. So I walked away. I said, okay. I was always really proud of what I had done. It's like, at least I kind of made history. You know, it was yeah. me, Doro, bitch, whatever, the few of us. I did it. And I walked away. I mean, I just literally, I stopped going to shows. I stopped listening. I just walked away and I got into pitbulls. You know? Wow. Really? <laughs> yeah. 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 That's, it, I mean, it's, I, I totally understand. It's also, it's just sad. It's, it's, it's frustrating as a fan that that, you know and, well and you know i also so could have fought I, I also could have fought more i just i have a weird personality like that when i'm done with something i'm, I'm just really done i don't yeah. have to beg you or work harder it's just like okay yeah i mean what am i going to come out in a freaking bra and a bustier all of a sudden and <laughs> yeah, start singing yeah. i mean yeah. yeah well i mean yeah it was okay to, and maybe i was tired and i don't remember being tired i don't know I don't know. Yeah. Well, yeah. And trying to bend over backwards to, to please. Yeah. I, I don't people. do that shit. Take yeah. it or leave it. You know, yeah. Like yeah. So I never did this to be famous. Oh my God. I wasn't famous. I was broke, but, but yeah, I used to get really pissed off. You're a chick. Really? Motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was pre arch enemy, pre ginger, pre yeah, yeah, let's... pre the women that that now dominate the world. Right? Yeah, which be in a lot of ways is you know because they were inspired by people like you. Um, yeah, that's really. that's really cool, man. I love those women. I love them, Courtney from Spirit Box. I have such a crush on her. Oh, oh yeah, she's great. Yeah, she's great. Yeah, and I hear you know it's it, yeah I'll hear younger bands, younger you know uh, bands with with you know female vocalists. You know, especially more aggressive vocalists like some of the you know, like Arch Enemy and bands you mentioned. Yeah, 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 and yeah, yeah. I always go back. I always like. I think I, like your name pops in my head immediately. Like it's like they had. Well, to I was heavy it. when I came out. I was yeah. heavy. Yeah, you know? yeah, 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 yeah. I really heavy. Torture Squad people. I came out in the land of Pet Benatar. I was heavy. <laughs> yeah. it was so fun. It was so yeah. fun. Yeah, that's. Really yeah. Cool. I'm really proud of it all. It was great. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, as you should be. Yeah, because yeah, you and you started, you know, we we, we kind of just touched on this briefly. Yeah, Rude Girl was your first band with with yes with, with Sandy Sledge and yes. Uh, yeah, yes. how did you connect with how did you connect with her? How did that all start? That was the the thing on the telephone pole. Somebody well, wanted right. a male singer Sorry. back then. What did we do? We called. Uh, yeah. And it was up in the Hate Ashbury, and I just moved to California. And I was always kind of into the hippie movement, Hendrix and Joplin. And it was, oh my God, it was at Hate Ashbury. I'm like, this is a right. sign. And I went up there and I did um, rock and roll, like kind of the heart version for them. 
Okay, and cool. Sandy, Sandy looked at me and she goes, um, hey, do you know who Bon Scott is? I said, yeah. She goes, can you try to sing like that? And I couldn't. But I, but I can remember going, hmm, in my voice. You know, I was really searching for how to sing. And my voice really wanted to go there. So I would say we probably rehearsed. I mean, I would just rehearse every night. I would just blow my voice out. Uh, and I rehearsed probably for seven or eight months before I went out. And then, like I said, I, someone turned me on to a holy diver and the whole, and when I heard that Dio sound, I was like, oh shit, he does them both. He does them both. He sings beautiful. And then he's, ah. and then I met him and I actually had a conversation with him about it. And, um, yeah, so it was really through them saying, but like I said, my voice really wanted to go there. I just didn't know it yet. I didn't know how to, how to get there. Nice. Nice. And, uh, so speaking of Sandy, so that, yeah, that, that brings me kind of circle, kind of full circle. So, you know, you left the industry, you came back in 2011 and reconnected with Sandy and you guys yeah. did an album together. Um, well, how that was that because the, well, it's because we lost Ronnie and okay. I got to tell you, I was supposed to go see him at some theater with Sandy and I like so many people, ah, oh, you know, I, I'll go to the next one. And then I found out he was sick. Ugh. Anyway, I went down to his services and um, he's buried in one of the forest lawn, just outrageous. I mean, that's where he should be, the sun, and you're just waiting for the gods to drop down. Yeah. And I just kind of went on a walk. It was such a horrible day. And I can just remember thinking um, what, a, what an idiot I was, uh, Bahendo, as I say in Spanish, that I was given a voice and I wasn't using it. It's the only thing that I could kind of do. And then I met Scott Warren and Jimmy Bain and I don't know. It just, I, I was just like, I got to try to do this again. It's the least I can do for what he gave me to try to. So I got back into it. Um, and again, I was pretty out of shape. I started going to the studios in LA and, and recording um, to see what I sounded like. Oh, did I destroy those CDs immediately? Um, and Sandy was in a band at the time. I wish I remembered their names because they were all wonderful to me. They would let me go in and sing a couple songs and they would back me. So that's how I got into it. Um, and then we did um, Imagine Me Alive, you know, just for something to do. Yeah. So I got back into it because of Ronnie. Nice. Very cool. Yeah. And yeah. Thankfully so. Thankfully so. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, now you're just, yeah, you're back and you're killing it. So. Um, yeah. Yeah. I always tell people, don't worry about getting older, man. It's just like fine wine, you know? Now you know what you want and you know how to do it. And you don't give a shit. You know? <laughs> right. Right. Like, you don't like, you don't need labels anymore. You don't need anybody. You know, you need yeah. some money and go record. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I agree. I think that's what that's one really nice thing I think about modern the modern musical industry because I know the industry can be pretty ugly sometimes. I mean, there's yeah, some yeah, beauty yeah, in yeah. it and there's some ugliness in it, but I think that's what's really nice now. You know, and I'm a I'm a '70s '80s kid, um, and it it yeah, you don't have to rely on music the 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 big the big giants anymore. You can record out yeah of in, in a way it's a drag because there's so many so much music but i can remember in the 80s saying there are so many bands mm. no, it's like no it's like but again you were talking about the old chest stand time i am so grateful that's the only reason i can get into doors i can play. that's the only reason i have anything is because people go oh leather you know i have a name from back then so yeah and it should be a household name in my opinion oh thank you <laughs> seriously i mean it's yeah, it's, you know, like, it, it, that was one thing that I was always, I think I was drawn to, you know, you, you mentioned this before is, you know, kind of what the industry was, you know, record executives, particularly trying to make you into after Chastain. And, yeah. uh, and that's what one thing I always liked about you was, yeah, it wasn't like, that I kept my clothes on. Yeah, it wasn't a sexual thing. It was just this powerful, well, you know, amazing I mean, voice. You also have to understand, I was out in the time of Doro and Lito. Lita, yeah. hot as shit. Calif I wasn't the hot blonde girl. And it used to, I used to say to them, why can't there be a Hetfield, a Hetfield chick that wears jeans and sneakers, you know? Yeah. Now you can do it, but back then you couldn't. But well, whatever, it, it's all good. But, you know, <laughs> listen, yeah. it was never me. I got to tell you, one time I did a show at Bogart's, which is a huge place I played with David all the time. And I slicked my hair back. And I, um, I mean, we all wore spandex anyway, but I wore like these high heeled boots and kind of did like the Betsy Ditch look, you know? <laughs> nice. And I really, and it was, I was so uncomfortable, but just to see, and everybody after this, they were going, what are you doing? And I'm like, yeah, thank you. Yeah. It's not you, you know? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Sorry, I'm falling over in the heel. It was so funny. 
But yeah, but I, I think you need to be who you are. If you're really a sexual person, you do it. I am not. I'm a tomboy. And then... <laughs> I look at some of those things now where the spandex, we would wear the one piece spandex and the bullet belts. Oh my God. So funny. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and Vinny's fashion. always like, what happened to those clothes? Oh my God. I burnt them years ago. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was, it was an interesting time fashion wise. It was, yeah. You look back at the pictures and yeah. Like, oh, Lord. In Brazil, though, they all do it again. They all wear, like, the striped um, spandex like I used to. They had the blonde in their hair. They, like, they dress up like oh, wow. I did. Bullet belts. It's so cool. It's so cool. <laughs> yeah, it is really fascinating, the the metal scene outside of the United States. Um, yeah. It, it's, yeah. It it's kind stuck. Of it kind of stuck. Well, the people keep, it's not that it's stuck. That's what they're into. 80s, 80s, 80s. Yeah. Europe too. Europe's like that too. Yeah, yeah. Europe and Japan. And yeah, it's, it's really In cool. Japan like that, I haven't been blessed to be able to go there yet. But oh no, I've seen pictures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot. Yeah, I've, I haven't been either, but I know there's a lot of like, especially AOR bands that are still really big in Japan. Yes. Really big. Yes, yes. Yeah. And then I've been trying here, to get there for years. Yeah, and here, here in the States, they'd be playing a club. There, they're playing stadiums. It's yeah, it's just a yeah. different ball game. So it really is. Well, what, remember the interview where Ronnie said uh, that it's a shame that the U.S. has become the land of American Idol. They don't care about putting in work anymore. They just brush you off to Kelly Clarkson or whatever, which is fine. I love you, Kelly Clarkson, but it's a different world. They see yeah. you on TV and you win a contest, then you play stadiums. You know? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. You, I miss that whole that, and and I think it still exists. But you know, the idea of yeah, just a bunch of kids playing in a garage. You know, and and I working know. really hard and driving to the place and playing clubs. And, I know, having no money for gas and shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just and somehow Not taking a shower for four days. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, I would be remiss if I didn't. You know, we we've, we've talked a little bit about you know Ronnie James Dio, and of course this is this week is you know the the fourteenth anniversary of his passing, um, and you had a really good relationship with him. I mean. Uh, you knew him pretty well and, and he really inspired you in a lot, like not just musically, but I think personally as well. Yeah. Yes, he did. Yes. Yeah. Would you be willing to talk a little bit about that? Kind of your relationship with him and how you met him? Well, you know, it's not like, it's not like we were friends and we would talk all the time, but when he would come to California once a year and, you know, I would go backstage and hang out with him with whoever I was with. Um, the first time I met him, it was, uh, you know, the good old state. God, it was down at Mountain View and it was with Sandy and Sandy was always great at getting backstage. And I was kind of wandering around in the days after the show and all of a sudden I hear a whistle and it was her. There we are on the Dio bus. And she had a Rude Girl cassette. And I, I was like, I couldn't speak to him at first. I was so, such, such a fan girl. And it was on and I was so embarrassed. And Dio was going, who is this? And I said, oh, it's me. So whatever, he just used to talk to me about vocals and certain modulations and, and stuff as I got to know him because I saw him when his voice was really tired. So he kind of taught me how to modulate and how to dodge things. And, um, but really I was kind of like, I mean, I did <laughs> say when I first met him and I used to say, look, I'm not trying to be corny. It's just for me as a young vocalist, I mean, I look at you and it's just, ah, um, you have like this aura. It's like you're unearthly to me. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if it's just because I like the music. And he looked at me and he grabbed my hand. Oh my God, in the table. And he said, that's what I wrote something in this life on uh, uh, Shockwaves. He said, it's something in this life that you will acquire. He goes, it comes with age. Just be patient. He always said to me, don't ever stop. Don't listen to people. Keep going. He And he looked at me and he said, you're good enough. But that's what he said. He goes, it's something, something in this life. And I was just like, Oh, yeah. so then, but after that, we would just talk about, you know, records and what we were doing and, you know, yeah, I just loved him so much. And literally I would just, and you know, he was timing, mean, he was like up to here right? and how I would watch him drink beer and smoke joints and then just go out there and wail. But I guess he told me he was also, um, he was good at breath because he played the horns, right? He played the French horn or something. So yeah, it was just a, because I used to say to him, as time went on, um, like after shockwaves, I said, everybody asks me about a technique. I, 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 I don't have a technique. And you say, yeah, you do. You just don't know what it is. Because don't worry about it. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, like great, I said, right? I, I would just see him once a year. Um, and it, it was really true. He always remembered you. He remembered your boyfriends. He remembered anybody that you were with. He made you feel like you were the only person in the room. Yeah, I adored him. 
Yeah, I've heard. I've never. I never met him, unfortunately. But yeah, I, I yeah. Heard that. Like he had like just kind of this photographic memory, and he was yeah. very genuine. Um, and if there were a hundred people in the room, he would take time with everybody and make you feel like, yeah, oh, I miss cool. him so much. I yeah. I thought about him with We Are the Chosen because he would have been really proud of me because I always would get him my stuff. Um, but he would have been proud of me on that one, probably. Oh, he would love that album. I think he would. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think so. Yeah, it's interesting. I I, uh, I talked to, um, not too long ago, I talked to Carl Kennedy from The Rods. And, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and he was telling me, so, you know, Ronnie played on, uh, right, he was sick at the time, and he, he sang on one of their albums, you know, because oh, he, yeah, yeah, he and yeah. Dave are cousins. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, and David told Carl that that Ronnie... Like he'll do this in one take, and he's like, "No, that's crazy." And he goes, "Yeah, damned if he did not come in yes. and he did it in one take, zero yeah. mistakes, just belted it out." Was and that, he obviously they're all like, Holy yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's true. I, I know a lot of people, so I, I get to hear some of his outtakes. It's like I'll see myself out. Just it's funny. I was just hanging out with Torture Squad. Of course, everybody puts on deal when I'm around, and I'm like, "Why do we do this? Why do I even sing? Listen to him." I mean, yeah, but he had just years and years and years and so much experience. And you know that word. And, and I, I don't. I'm not ungrateful, but people say legend and queen, and but no, th that word is thrown around. Those are for people like Ronnie Dio. He was just, just a once in a lifetime person, talent wise alone. Oh God. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing talent. I would, well, I don't know. I don't want to gush too much, but I would put you in that same category. So. Oh, well, I, well, I, I, I tried I to say the amazing. style. <laughs> well, I think I mean, they're like, amazing. How would do it? I mean, this, well, it's a style. It's a style that we, that yeah. I, that we had in the 80s. Yeah. 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 But I, I mean, I think I truly, you have a, a your, your vocal, your, it's, in, it's inspirational. I think what you. Thank you. Like, Thank you. Yeah, Thank it you. really, it really is. So, um, uh, well, Leather, this has been and am amazing to talk with you this afternoon. Thank you so very much. I, I Absolutely. Really it was fun. Um, so for those of you watching, uh, look in the description below. There's links to, to Leather's uh, uh, Instagram page and, 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 and Facebook and, and website. If you do not own We Are The Chosen, <laughs> go buy it right fucking now because this yeah it's a good record it's kills. a good record yeah yeah yeah. It's, yeah yeah it's it just it rocks from i mean it's a it's a juggernaut it's a sonic juggernaut i mean it just yeah it's a good workout album like i i will go run now and i just people think i'm crazy in town because i kind of run and sing you know but it's like right. eh, 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 and people are like oh my god here comes that crazy bitch <laughs> <laughs> Nice. it's great it's nice but yeah thank you very much i'm glad yes. you finally got together and just send me the link i'm excited yes thank you so much